So I'm Karen Rudo, one of the second year residents here. Um, I just want to start off by talking a little bit about uh, Fuchs dystrophy. It's pretty an important disease. About 1% of the general population in the U.S. has it. Um, it's one of the most common indications for corneal transplant in our country. Uh, initially, it's pretty asymptomatic, and then as the disease progresses, you can get the decreased vision, foreign body sensation, and pain in the morning. Uh, some of the things you see on exam we all know about are gute, and the cornea, with then later on in the disease process, you develop edema. Uh, treatment for this, uh, typically we say, well, if normal thickness, then you cataract surgery. If there's no cataract, but you're developing symptoms from Fuchs, then do the cornea transplant, and then if there's both, then you do a combined procedure. Uh, previous research has come up with some general recommendations that if you are around 600 microns thickness in the cornea, then there's no symptoms, then probably just do cataract surgery, and you really don't need any corneal procedures yet, but then you need to start considering a combined procedure when you start reaching a thickness of 640 microns. The problem is everybody's baseline cornea starts out at a different thickness. So in this study, there were uh, 969 uh, subjects uh, divided into four groups. These were patients from uh, the Genetics Multicenter Study Group, and that's why the groups are divided up like this. They're index cases, um, affected family members, unaffected family members, these patients did not have Fuchs, and then a control group. To be in the study as an index case, you had to be 18 or older, and you had to have severe Fuchs dystrophy, so the way that was done was you've already had a cornea transplant in one eye, and this was actually histologically confirmed as Fuchs. And uh, then there's also a more complex way that if you have certain relatives and things of that nature. Uh, the control group was basically 60 or older, normal corneas. And then family members just unaffected if grade was zero and if any amount of fuchs at all is considered affected. So that left us with 1,610 eyes. Uh, we excluded eyes if they had had a corneal transplant already because it's hard to measure thickness in an eye that has somebody else's cornea in it now. Uh, we excluded patients that had cataract surgery within one year because uh, cataract surgery is well known to um, temporarily affect the cornea and its health and thickness, and then as well as any trauma or any other endothelial dystrophy. This is the grading scheme that was used. So it goes from zero to six, basically zero is a normal cornea, and then um, increasing amounts of gute all the way up to grade six where there's edema present. Uh, this is the first table. Basically, this is just the baseline characteristics here. A um, couple important things to note uh, in our study. 96.8% of our index cases and high percentages of the other groups were white people. So this doesn't really look too much at other um, ethnicities. Uh, Fuchs is more common in white people, but it still would be nice to have other groups there. Uh, this also is a high percentage of females. Uh, this is just looking at some other characteristics. Um, you know, things like contact lens wear have been uh, associated with uh, thickness of the cornea. Some people say that, you know, maybe the thickness will decrease over time. Um, then this also looks at um, whether they've had edema or not. And in this case, our index cases actually had a higher percentage of edema than the affected family members. So two groups of patients that are affected by Fuchs. And we think that the index cases had a higher percentage. So you see 45.9% had edema versus their family members, which have Fuchs, which is only 21.4%. So the people who sought out care basically might have been more symptomatic, possibly. 
Uh, this is just uh, looking at different things that may have affected the corneal thickness. Um, some things that are significant here, uh, you notice one classic thing that's taught is that when you have a change in pressure, you also have a change in the corneal thickness, and we don't really know whether that's just an association or if one's causing the other, but we did find that in this study as well. As the pressure goes up, the corneal thickness goes up as well. And the other significant item on this table is that when you have uh, symptoms, blurred vision in the morning, you're also more likely to have a thicker cornea, and that makes sense. This figure here demonstrates that as you increase that grade of Fuchs, you have an increased mean corneal thickness, which we'll talk about in a bit. This table here is nice because if you look at the control group and the unaffected family members, so two groups without Fuchs, they have similar corneal thicknesses. And there's no difference between those. And that's also sort of in a general range of where we'd expect the average population to have a corneal thickness. And then the other interesting thing here is that if you look at the index cases, even for a low grade of Fuchs, so grades one to three, just a few gute present, they already have thicker corneas than the control group. And here, this table shows basically, um, among other things, it shows that the thickness is uh, related to edema. So if you have edema, your cornea is thicker, which again makes sense. So just to, you know, that's just a lot of data tables there, but the main points to take away from this is that central thickness increases with increasing Fuchs severity in both the index cases and the family members who have Fuchs. The increased thickness is present even when there's only is one to two millimeters of central gute. So that's very mild disease that probably a lot of ophthalmologists maybe wouldn't even notice. Um, increasing thicknesses at lower grades suggest a balance between increasing permeability and endothelial pumping may be disturbed at an earlier phase of the disease than previously thought. So before, it was thought that, well, you are losing endothelial cells, they're not working very well, but you're still managing to keep a clear cornea, and then eventually you lose one too many, and all of a sudden everything decompensates and you get a uh, edematous cornea that's causing you symptoms. But here it's suggesting that maybe something is occurring sooner that before you actually have clinically apparent edema. And a previous paper suggested that this may be related to an increase in stromal thickness due to the endothelial dysfunction aspect. Some limitations here is this is cross-sectional one point in time rather than longitudinal design study following each individual patient. And this is actually a pretty big limitation. It's, you know, like we said before, somebody's baseline may be 450 microns, somebody else's may be 650, and it might be more important to track that over time to see how the thickness is changing over time. And then we did use the typical pachymetry that we're all used to, it's ultrasound based. Um, so all we get is a number that's this thick. We don't really know where this edema is coming, coming from. And then, you know, should we look at central thickness? Should we look someplace else in the cornea that might be thicker or more symptomatic? So just a few points to take away from this. What does this paper actually mean? Um, maybe instead of just waiting for symptoms, you should actually follow the corneal thickness over time during each exam, each follow-up appointment. And that way you know what somebody's baseline is, and as you're starting to see changes, you might be able to do something about it earlier. And so if you wait until the person's extremely symptomatic, 
then there may be chronic changes in the, stro the corneal stroma that even after doing a DSAC to replace that endothelium, you may have, you know, some visually significant changes that will never go away. If you do it before severe edema develops, then you might have a better visual result, better outcome. And if you want more detail or more time to look at some of those tables or read more specifically, you could also look this up in archives and read more. Are there any questions?